In this segment we're going to be discussing the comparison test. The comparison test is just another method for um, determining whether or proving whether a series is going to converge or not. It's called the comparison test because we're going to take the series we're interested in and compare it to another one. So in the theorem for the comparison test we're asked to let um, the series of a sub k's and the series b sub k's be series with non-negative terms. And by the way, in chapter 10, section 5 of the Anton Calculus textbook, um, all of the tests that we're going to look at will, will um, only work for series with non-negative terms. In this case, we not only want the series to be series with non-negative terms, but we also have a certain relationship between the terms of the underlying sequences. So that A1 is what we're always going to refer to as the smaller of the two series. So that each one of its terms is always less than or equal to the terms of the B series. A1 less than or equal to B1, A2 less than or equal to B2, and so on. Now, if this is the case, then we say that if the bigger series, and here we're referring to the BK series, if the bigger series converges, then that forces the smaller series to converge as well. And on the other hand, if the smaller series diverges, then there's no way that the bigger series can be small enough to converge, so it forces the bigger series to uh, diverge as well. Now to understand how this works, you might want to think of um, the area that each one of these series represents. So in particular, let's look at the series um, 1 over 3 k squared, k equals 1 to infinity, I haven't written that, but I'm assuming that and the series 1 over k squared and let's compare the areas that these summations represent. So here I have the function representing um, 1 y equals 1 over x squared this curve here and so it's going to hit the series 1 over k squared at each integer value greater than or equal to 1 And if you think back to like Riemann sums, if we were trying to estimate the area under the curve 1 over x squared, um, we would do that with um, rectangles. And our series is basically adding us, asking us to add up those rectangles that are centered at the integers 1, 2, 3, and so on. All right, so for the series 1 over k squared, we have a rectangle with a base of 1 and a height of 1, because 1 over 1 squared is 1, for our first entry in the series. In other words, the first term here is 1. The second term has a base of width 1 and a height of, well, when k is 2, it's going to give us 1 fourth. So that gives us an area of 1 fourth for this rectangle here, ending at the curve y equals 1 over x squared. And then this next rectangle would be 1 over 3 squared, or 1 ninth unit high, but it's 1 unit wide, so its total area is 1 ninth, and so on. So you can imagine this series, 1 over k squared, being the total areas if I were to continue drawing all these rectangles. Now, by comparison, this is going to always be smaller. 1 over 3 squared is going to be a third the size. So the areas in pink represent one third of 1 over k squared, or in other words, 1 over 3 k squared, which is going to give us a 1 third and a 1 twelfth and a 1 twenty seventh and so on. Now we know that 1 over k squared converges because it's a p series with k is a p where p is greater than 1. And so it just makes sense that if the areas of the larger rectangles are small enough to converge, then so must be the area of the smaller rectangles. 
And similarly, you could draw a picture where you know that the smaller diverges, then there's no way the larger rectangles could have a small enough area to still converge. To use the comparison test, we basically have two tasks. First, we need to guess at whether the series we're interested in converges or diverges. And second, we then need to find a series to compare it to. Okay, so our first example, we're going to determine whether the series converges using the comparison test. And the series that we're going to look at is part A the series from k equals 1 to infinity of k plus 1 over k squared minus k. Okay, so again the first part of using the comparison test is to guess whether the series converges. And the way we're going to do that is to a lot of times focus on the highest power in the numerator and denominator for looking at a particular rational expression and just kind of think about what series it would behave like that we know converges or diverges. So, for example here, this series is going to behave very similarly to the series k over k squared because all I've done here is I've looked at uh, just the highest powers because highest powers tend to dominate the behavior of a function or the behavior of a series and that's the same as just 1 over k so it seems like this is going to behave like the harmonic series. Now notice that this starts at k equals 2 but remember when we're looking at convergence and divergence whether or not we're including the first few finite terms doesn't matter so we really can just ignore that when we're trying to figure out whether it converges. Alright, so the first task is done and what I'm saying is that I'm going to guess that this diverges because I know that the harmonic series diverges. Now since oftentimes the process of guessing whether it diverges involves mentally comparing to another series, that often gives you a, a good lead on what series you're going to compare it to. And in this case, since I want to um, guess that it's diverging, I'm going to, first of all, remember if you think that it's going to diverge, then you want to find a smaller series that also diverges. So what I'm hoping is, is it not only behaves like 1 over k, similar to it, but I'm hoping that it's smaller than 1 over k at for every value of k. So how do we determine that? Well, let's go ahead and talk about the properties of k plus 1 over k squared minus k. First of all, if I drop the 1, that means the numerator is smaller. So that means that this thing is going to get um, smaller and so it's going to be greater than k over k squared minus k. Now what happens if I drop the minus k from the denominator? Well that means I'm making the denominator larger which once again means that I'm making the fraction smaller and that is just equal to 1 over k. So what we see here is that the series containing us, um, the underlying sequence of 1 over k's is always going to be smaller than this series over here. So that's good, we found our smaller series. So note that we have the series 1 over k diverges because it's harmonic and so that means that by the comparison test and you should really indicate which test you're using when you're writing out um, an explanation like this of convergence by the comparison test that means that the original series we were looking at k plus 1 over k squared minus k which is larger 
also diverges. Again, we showed that it was larger here. Okay, next let's look at another series, kind of similar situation in that it's a rational expression. We're looking at the series k equals 1 to infinity of 2 over k to the fourth plus k. And so again, I'm and my attempt to guess whether this is going to converge. I'm going to think about um, dropping the lower powers on this expression. So if I just look at the higher powers, this should behave like the series k equals 1 to infinity of 2 over k to the fourth. And that series is 2 times the p series, k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k to the fourth, which converges because a constant times a convergent series is a convergent series. Um, so it looks like my guess is going to be that this converges. And so if I'm going to use the comparison test, which the instructions told me to do, then I am going to need to find a larger meaning that each term is larger, series that converges. And again, in the process of figuring out whether I thought it would converge or diverge, I compared it to 2 over k to the fourth. And so what I would like to check now is whether 2 over k to the fourth is in fact a larger series. If it is, we already know that it converges and we're done. So how do we do that? Well, coming down here, if we have 2 over k to the fourth plus k, which is going to be, you know, the uh, kth term of our series, then what happens if I take the plus k away from the denominator? Well, in that case, the denominator gets smaller. And what effect does that have? If the numerator stays the same size, but the denominator gets smaller, it actually makes our expression larger because we're dividing by a smaller number. So here we see that in fact the series 2 over k to the fourth is larger and it converges. We know that from above here. Alright, so by the comparison test, since the sum 2 over k to the fourth converges, so does the sum 2 over k to the fourth plus k. So again, this is called the comparison test because we're using a series that we know converges, comparing the terms, and concluding that the series we're looking at converges as well. Let's try one more. Let's look at part C, the series k equals 1 to infinity of natural log of k over k. And again, the first thing we want to do is to analyze this to see if we think it's going to converge or diverge. Well, for me, it helps me in this case to think of this as 1 over k times the natural log of k. Now, we know that 1 over k by itself would diverge because it's the harmonics, harmonic series. And we know that natural log of k, remember, it's going to behave like natural log of x, which increases without bound as x increases. So the natural log of k is also going to diverge its underlying sequence, in other words, certainly doesn't approach zero. Alright, so I'm going to guess that this diverges. Alright, now how do we prove it? Well, in order to show that it diverges, we need to find a smaller series that diverges. And what I'm thinking is, here we have the series 1 over k 
being multiplied by the natural log, which if we're talking about values greater than e, right, because the natural log of e is 1, then we're multiplying 1 over k by a value larger than 1. So I'm saying if k is greater than e, then that means the natural log of k is greater than 1. And what would that mean? That would mean that 1 over k times the natural log of k is strictly greater than 1 over k, which means that the series 1 over k would be our quote smaller series, which we know diverges because it's harmonic, and so the larger series must also diverge. So by the comparison test, if, or maybe I should say since, 1 over k com, uh, diverges, so does natural log of k over k.